Time to tell them, everybody. We hope everybody can hear us well. I'm your brother, Zach Wong. This is your brother, Costa Phone. We are Hebrew Readers Church. We thank you all for joining with us on this Passover evening. As we're going to go into the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We hope everybody's been enjoying their Sabbath day, and we hope everything's been well with you in the grace of Allah. Brother Kasafo, let us hear your mic just to make sure we're good before we get going. Hey, hey, brothers and sisters. All right. <laughs> we're good. All right, we're sorry for being late. We were trying to wrap up a couple of last-minute things for the lessons, and we got a little bit behind schedule, so we hope everybody just has mercy on us. Brother Kasafo? Right. Praise the high. And also today, seeing as though it is Passover, it's a great time to go into the events of Passover. We have a few lessons coming out today, so this won't be the only one. Be on the lookout. All right. The advent of Passover. This discussion is to see what transpired leading up to the Passover. We're jumping into the story in the 210th year of the Israelites dwelling in Egypt. Let's go from Jasher chapter 80, verse 1, please. And at the end of two years, I again sent Moses to Pharaoh to bring forth the children of Israel and to send them out of the land of Egypt. Notice he said he sent him again. Moses had went two years prior when he had saw Elohim at the burning bush and Pharaoh rejected him. And then he dwelt with the children of Israel, him and Aaron, for two years. And we're coming in at the end of it now to see the charge that Ahiah gave. Can you read Exodus 6 and 13, please? And the highest spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. On the 24th day of the 12th month, they were commanded to go unto Pharaoh the next morning. Those of you should have your calendars now, so you can even have it there to follow along. Pick up at Exodus chapter 7, verse 15 to 18, please. All right. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the river, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thy hand. And thou shalt say unto him, Ahia Elohim of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith Ahia, and this thou shalt know, that I am Ahia. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. Now, this is what Moses said to Pharaoh on the morning of the 25th day of the 12th month. Let's continue in verse 19 to 20, and then verse 25, please. Exodus chapter 7, verse 19. And the highest spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, as Ahiah commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And how many days did this last? Can you read Exodus 7 and 25, please? And seven days were fulfilled after that Ahiah had smitten the river. So we have after the Ahaya has smitten the river, we count seven days. That brings us to the first day of the first month. That's the seventh day of the river being of blood. And when it was fulfilled, the next day after is the second day of the first month. And we're going to pick up in Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, 2, and then verse 5 to 12, please. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. And Ahiah sang unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith Ahiah, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. This is what he was saying to Pharaoh on the second day of the first month. 
continue, please, to chapter 8, verse 5 to 12. And the highest spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat Ahia, that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. And I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice unto Ahia. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like Ahia, our Elohim. This conversation is happening on the, the second day. And he said tomorrow. So when that comes to pass, it's going to be on the third day of the first month. All right, continue, please. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went up out, of, out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto Ahiah because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. Now we're in the third day of the first month. Let's pick up at Exodus chapter 8, verse 13. To 19, please. And Ahiah did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them, as Ahiah had said. And Ahiah said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become life throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became life in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became life throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magician did so with their enchantments to bring forth life, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of Elohim. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as Ahiah said. This all transpired. This is still the third day of the first month that that happened. Now, on the night of the fourth day of the first month, Ahiah commanded Moses again. Here, Exodus 8 and 20, please. And Ahiah said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning. And stand before Pharaoh, lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith Ahiah, let my people go, that they may serve me. So now we're going into the morning of the fourth day, for what Moses commanded to say. Let's see what he was told to say in Exodus 8, verse 21 to 24, please. Else if thou would not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants upon thy people, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon thou art. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarm of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am Ahiah in the midst of the earth. And I will put a, a division between my people and thy people, Tomorrow shall the sign be. And Ahiah did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into the land of Egypt. And the land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And so Ahiah told Moses to go unto Pharaoh in the morning of the fourth day and say all these things. And on that day, he told Pharaoh, Tomorrow shall the sign be. So we're going into the fifth day when the swarm of flies came upon Pharaoh. Now, let's see what Pharaoh says on that fifth day of the first month. Can you read Exodus chapter 8, verse 25, 29, and 30, please? Right. Exodus chapter 8, verse 25. 
And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your Elohim in the land. Exodus 8 and 29. And Moses said, Behold, I will go out from thee, and I will entreat Ahiah that the swarm of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants and from his people, tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to Ahiah. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated of Ahiah. So on the fifth day, he told him tomorrow he would go out and entreat for him. And he did. So that brings us to the sixth day that Ahiah did according to Moses' entreaty. And can you read Exodus 8 and 31, please? And Ahiah did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of the flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. The remain not one. Now continuing when the sixth day of the first month. Let's see what happened on this day. Exodus chapter 8 verse 32 please. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither will he let the people go. And let's jump to Exodus chapter 9 verse 1 to 5 to see what else transpired on this day. Then Ahiah said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh. And tell him, thus saith Ahiah Elohim of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of Ahiah is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, there shall be a very grievous moraine. And Ahiah shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And Ahiah appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow Ahiah shall do this thing in the land. We have the plague that will come upon the cattle. According to Exodus 9 and 6. Let's pick up there, please. And Ahiah did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Continuing on that seventh day, what transpired in Exodus chapter 9, verse 7 to 12, please. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. That same day, another plague was sent on the land. On that same seventh day, can you read Exodus 9, verse 8 to 12, please? And the highest sent unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you a handful of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. It shall be a boil breaking forth with lands upon man and upon beasts throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with blands upon man and upon beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boils was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. And Ahiah hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And he hearkened not unto them as Ahiah had spoken unto Moses. Right. So now on the night of the eighth day, Ahiah spoke unto Moses again. Can you read Exodus 9, verse 13 to 18, please? And Ahiah said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith Ahiah, Elohim of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people that thou mayest know, there is none like me in all the earth. But now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exalted thou thyself against my people, that thou will not let them go. All right. Verse 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time, 
I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even unto now. So this was on the eighth day of the first month that he told them tomorrow about this time. This is what Moses said on the morning of the eighth day. So tomorrow is referring to the morning of the ninth day of the first month. Let's see what was done on that day. Exodus chapter 9, verse 22 and 23, please. And Ahia said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, that there may be a hell in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and Ahia sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and Ahia rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So this is that plague that was promised to come on the morning of the ninth day of the first month. Let's continue in Exodus 9, verse 24, and then 26 to 29, please. Exodus chapter 9, verse 24. So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. Exodus chapter 9, verse 26. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Ahiah is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Entreat Ahiah, for it is enough, that there be no more mighty thunderings in hell, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto Ahiah, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know that all the earth is Ahiah. Jump to verse 33 and 34, please. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto Ahiah. And the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. So we're still in the same ninth day that this is transpiring. Jump to chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, please. And Ahiah said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh. For I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's sons, what things I have wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may, that ye may know how that I am Ahia. And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh, and said unto him, Thus saith Ahiah, Elohim of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast. This was told to Pharaoh that same ninth day of the month, so tomorrow is referring to the tenth day of the month. All right, can you read Exodus chapter 10, verse 5? to seven please and they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hail and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve Ahiah the Elohim. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? Now they're complaining. This is about 15 days of plagues and things happening to them. And you can see there how quick I was bringing the trouble upon the Egyptians. Can you read verse 12 of chapter 10, please? And the highest said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land. 
even all that the hail has left. Continue in Exodus chapter 10, verse 13, 14, and then go from 16 to 22, please. Exodus chapter 10, verse 13. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Ahiah brought an east wind upon the land all that day, and all that night, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. So there we see, on the ninth day is when he had given the command. So all that day, when Moses was told to do it, that was that ninth day. And then all that night was going into the tenth day. And then you have on the tenth day, you're going to see all the locusts there. Continue, please. Verse 14. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them, there was no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. Exodus chapter 10, verse 16. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against Ahiah Yalahim and against you. Now therefore, now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat Ahiah Yalahim, that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Ahiah. And Ahiah turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. But Ahiah hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And Ahiah said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt even darkness which may be felt. He told him to do this on the 10th day. All right, continue verse 22, please. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. So the 10th day he was told to do it, and it lasted three days, which will bring us, we have the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. Those are the three days of darkness that the people experience and we can see what happened during that time you can read jasher chapter 80 verse 36 to 40 please and alahim sent darkness upon egypt that the whole land of egypt and pathros became dark for three days so that a man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth at that time died many of the people of israel who had rebelled against ahiah and who would not hearken to moses and aaron and believe not in them that Elohim had sent them. Those who would not hearken to the voice of Moses had said, We will not go forth from Egypt, lest we perish from hunger in the desolate wilderness. And I have plagued them in the three days of darkness, and the Israelites buried them in those days without the Egyptians knowing of them or rejoicing over them. And the darkness was very great in Egypt for three days. And any person who was standing when the darkness came remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And he that was lying continued lying in the same state. And he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground in the same spot. And this thing happened to all the Egyptians until the darkness had passed away. Three full days brings us to 19 days of events happening. Then. After these three days were fulfilled, we're on the 14th day of the first month, which is the Sabbath day, today. And let's see what transpired. Can you read Jasher chapter 80, verse 41 and 42, please? And the days of darkness passed away. And the highest sent Moses and Aaron to the children of Israel, saying, Celebrate your feast and prepare your Passover. But behold, I come in the midst of the night among all the Egyptians, and I will smite all their firstborn, from the firstborn of the man to the firstborn of the beast. And when I see your Passover, I will pass over you. And the children of Israel did according to all that Ahiah had commanded Moses and Aaron. Thus did they in that night. So there we see they learned about the Passover this very day, back in the time of Exodus. The same day they were told to keep it, they went that night and kept the Passover. And the plagues transpired for about 19 days. We know what came after that. The 
killing of the firstborn. Can you read Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, and then verse 6 to 14, please? Uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And the highest spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Exodus chapter 12, verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. There you see that 10th to the 14th day. That's the time of preparation when you read in the New Testament. All right. Continue. You are going into Exodus chapter 12, verse 11 to 14. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, with your shoes on your feet, and with your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the highest Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the Elohims of Egypt will I execrate judgment. I am Ahia. Praise Ahia. Continue, please. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Ahia throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Amen. Amen. Verse 21 and 24, please. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee, and to thy sons forever. All right, you received the command. Oh, yeah, you go ahead. You on it. Go ahead. You on it. Verse 28. <laughs> and the children of Israel went away, and did as Ahiah had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. All right, in verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight, a highest for all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, and from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of, of the cattle. And then we see that's what transpired. That's how Passover came to be. So this is just a short little showing of how quick things can change when Ahia's appointed time comes. It's the Egyptian's whole life turned around. It comes very hastily. And I hope that was edifying. And hopefully we get to partake in the feasting that they partook in tonight. Can you read Jubilee chapter 49, 2 to 6, and close there, please? For on this night, the beginning of the festival and the beginning of the joy, you were eating the Passover in Egypt when all the powers of Mastema had been let loose to slay all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captive maidservant in the mill and to the cattle. And this is the sign which Ahia gave them. And to every house in the lentils of which they saw the blood of the lamb of the first year, and to that house they should not enter the sleigh, but should pass over it, but that all those should be saved that were in the house because the sign of the blood was on its lentils. And the powers of Ahia did everything according as Ahia commanded them. And they passed by all the children of Israel. And the plague came not upon them to destroy them amongst them, any soul, either of cattle or man or dog. And the plague was very grievous in Egypt. And there was no house in Egypt where there was not one dead and weeping and lamentation. And all Israel was eating the flesh of the Paschal Lamb and drinking the wine, and was lauding and blessing, and giving thanks to Ahia, Elohim of their fathers, and was ready to go forth from under the yoke of Egypt and from the evil bondage. All right. 
praise Ahaya. We get a little understanding of what was going on, the spiritual activity as well. And Lord willing, we get to drink the wine and Lord and bless Ahaya and give thanks to all Ahaya, hoping for our own deliverance in these times while remembering the deliverances of old to encourage us in the faith. We're coming on with the laws of unleavened bread next. So everybody just stick with us. We'll be coming on maybe in the next 10 minutes. So everybody stick with us and uh, we'll catch you when we come on. Peace.